Philadelphia 17 semifinalists who are now on the new legend stage. The team honestly hasn't changed much since Philadelphia. There's been one major, uh, you know, change in there. But from that team to where it didn't necessarily seem super confident on stage in America, what do you attribute genuinely the success to now being where you are? I think, first of all, the change, as you would describe, isn't big. I think it's tremendous. I think it's huge. Uh, one player in the lineup can do a lot. And uh, we've been uh, def different ever since we went through the trial period and everything. So I think we're absolutely different 180 team from back then. Obviously, this tied to me not being IGL as well. I wasn't doing as good a job as I think Kixan is doing right now. So this is a completely different project to me, despite having like similar faces on the, on the squad. But uh, what we're doing here is playing good CS. What we did back then was just surviving, I guess. We talked a little bit off camera about what Fragadelphia 17 was for you. It, was it a catalyst for, for everything else that's that's kind of gone on since then? Um, in a way, yes. I think the catalyst was really the unsuccessful major qualification before Fragadelphia, where we didn't manage to get in. And Fragadelphia was kind of like last hope to salvage the season, which didn't go well as well. But I think the real like pivot point was uh, the not being able to qualify to the Rio Major and uh, going through open qualifiers, and that was that was it basically. You've had a lot of experience in North America as well. You were part of that weird Cloud Nine time. Um, when when you look at your journey through it, even accomplishing it now with this being your most successful project, can you look back and feel extremely accomplished? Absolutely. Like the Cloud Nine period, it was two months, two brief months. And I learned a lot, honestly, during those two months. It was most, probably one of the most impactful two months of my life. Not really in terms of Counter-Strike, but in terms of me being abroad, completely focusing on uh, CS, uh, developing myself, going off uh, from uh, most personal, I know, where I played pure support player into more of a, you know, I got, a, I got a more freedom and I realized that I can actually shoot, you know. Uh, because I, I didn't get to do that much in uh, most sports. And it was a huge confidence boost to me. Going in an A and, you know, playing well, it opened my eyes that actually this is something I want to move forward to do so. And uh, in no chance, FPX got sent after the Cloud9 stint. Uh, I was playing these things and it showed me that I am still like capable of playing well. And uh, I, I, I cannot thank enough to Cloud9 for giving me a chance back then and uh, Jack and everyone on the roster balance and guys. You know, now as as a team, you guys are incredibly vocal. You're probably just one of the loudest teams that we have heard at this major so far. Um, do you feel that riding that emotional high has helped you become so successful at this stage? I think we're definitely playing better on land, and this is one of the biggest factors that we play so well. The stress, we kind of transform it into excitement, into adrenaline, shouting, being uh, hyped about each other. Uh, it's hard to keep that in online games, in online tournaments. And uh, I'm so glad that we are this kind of a team that are vocal and even I started to be myself. I was always a quiet guy, but here adrenaline and emotions are just flowing. So I'm, I'm glad that we are, we're like this and it helps us. But do you ever feel though that there's always the crash in case when rounds don't start to go your way, everyone gets quiet and, and you really can start performing even worse than if you never were riding that emotional high to begin with? You hit the nail on the head. I think uh, this is one of our biggest weaknesses right now. It's being able to play well in the matchups where the things are not going our way necessarily. If we're not winning duels, we could see in G2 on Inferno. We weren't just not winning duels and we were like dead on the team speak, I would say. Like, it's, um, it was rough, but this is, we know about it and we know that we have to work on it. And it's, I'm so glad that we are open about it uh, in the team and we know that uh, this is our uh, loose condition sometimes and we have to avoid it. It's, it's a little interesting to see you guys at this stage and performing so dominantly. Um, like you said before, the fails major qualifier run, and not even that, you made it after out of the European qualifiers, which were also incredibly intensive, and now you've made it through the first stage with a 3-1 record, which in also includes a win over Liquid. Uh, how, I guess, how do you even feel about that? I mean, what is your raw emotion right now after that win? Raw emotion is really like, I'm being calm about it because I believe 100% that we will like beat liquid honestly um if we get more chance to pace these teams that are in the partner circuits i would feel that we are um, better than a lot of them i'm not gonna say all of them obviously but 
the thing is we don't get the chances too much because of our you know rankings and everything is so tied together on the top level with the blast circuit the esl circuit i think it's completely wrong and uh i support what uh, snappy said about blast like if if blast is hosting events and they want to do our uh, their best in terms of counter strike they should be able it should be able to open to all of the teams and have more spots open i mean quarter of the partner teams from blast didn't even make it to the major second quarter second quarter of the teams is on the verge of elimination and this just shows you that teams like us like i don't know nine I, into the bridge like these things uh gamer legion they're capable of playing good cs but we don't get the chance to show it that much and it's sad do you, do you feel that it's become a detriment to the counter-strike community when they have these more exclusive leagues that teams like yourself which only really have the opportunity to show up at a major which is entirely open I don't really understand the economics of the game, and I know it's tied heavily to that. But I believe, for me as a player, I'm going to be completely selfish and say it right now that I think it's it hurts. And uh, it's sometimes these partner teams has a, they have a leverage into signing a players for you know in in worse conditions because players they kind of have to choose between a team that is not in the partner team, but then they they have an option to sign with a team that is in the partner uh, tournament, and they often go for that without thinking too much. They, they just want to play the game and this is what we want as well. But it's different to play CCT online cash cups every week compared to IEM Dallas and these things that are you get invited to, et cetera. And you, do you feel that when you don't get those invites to the other things, it continues to be like a cycle. You can't get that invite or this invite. You have to keep going through the open qualifier. It's really hard to be not a partner team and get into top 20. And top 20 is actually where you get a lot of these invites. So it's a it's like a cycle that only few teams are able to break. Maybe Monta, maybe, um, I can't think of people on top of my head, but uh, Spirit Force, I think these teams are capable of doing it, but there's like very little spots to do so. And um, it's rough, I, I, I don't like it. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate the honesty.